Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 106 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them. Let's get right to it. This one's called Journey. Hello Mark, can you take me on a journey? Kind regards, Gabriel. Hmm. I think he's out of Germany because the bottom thing is all in German and his last name is Worm, W-U-R-M. I'm guessing he's German. Uh, yeah, it, anyone that sends me a, kind of a vague email like that immediately gets a Flat Earth shortlist for a new people link, which you can check out. I'll also send the, also send the link for a Behind the Curve documentary and I will send the link uh, for the... Flat Earth Testimony Shows by Subject Matter Expert, which I recommend to anybody. So thank you for that, Gabriel. This one's called Thanks. Mark, thanks for all thanks for doing all you have done to wake people up to the truth about the earth. Love Daniel Robbins. And he gives me his phone number and then Psalm 119 verse 63. And I don't know what that is. Somebody should look that up and let me know. I Maybe I'll remember to do it afterwards. We'll see. This one's called Email Test from Planet Mars. Hi, Mark. Hopefully you've seen the picture from Mars. This is now an email from Planet Mars. I just want to know how long this email takes to get to you. It is now 22 hours, 30 minutes Greenwich Mean Time. November 30th, 2018. Kind regards, Adam from planet Mars. Well, I got it pretty quick, so I, you didn't have to worry about that. And so I, I emailed him back and said, uh, hey man, how's it going? And again, this is one of those flat earth things because now that I've been doing flat earth for so long, how can I judge someone like that? Uh, you know, I, He may be kidding, and he probably is kidding, of course, uh, but uh, even if he wasn't kidding, he could be yeah, absolutely drop dead serious and I'd still give him a few minutes because why not, right? You know, flat earth makes you the most open-minded person you can be. And at that point, how can you judge anybody, whether they say they're Napoleon or Cleopatra or in this case, sending me an email from Mars. This one's called Moon BS. Mark, don't know if you've addressed this. I emailed you this question, but I don't get to listen to the show much recently. Anyway, asked about two moon shots, almost typed. <laughs> yeah, something else, not shots. Probably more accurate. How are these two photos possible? These photos are both recent, probably within the last year. This came to a point seeing news that both the United States and Russia claim they'll have the moon colonized within the next 20 years. Uh huh. <laughs> because for the last 50 years, we've just been doing what? We had no ability to colonize the moon? Um, my capability for BS is really getting challenged. Space Race 2, anyone? Shades of the 1960s, I swear. Thanks, mister. I'll try to listen more often in the future. Steve. Uh, yeah, there's... How many different ways can I go with this? Uh, the space race is absolutely fake. And of course, the bigger question is why when the United States got to the moon, if you believe we actually got to the moon, why did nobody else try, especially the Soviet Union back then? And it was still the Soviet Union for the next uh, what, 60, mid 60s to the early 90s. It was still the Soviet Union. So they should have had their space program moving and moving. Uh, why didn't they? Why have the Russians never gone back? Why have the Chinese never uh, put a man on the moon? Why has no other country even tried to put a man on the moon? It's, I mean, we've gotten literally to where next year, 2019, is going to be two generations. And that's being generous, you know, 25 years per generation. Two generations of people that have not seen any uh, space um, activity. So why not? Big, big question. Oh, I'm sorry. I should view the pictures real quick. Oh, yeah. One is a shot from, from from the moon. There's no way that's real in a million years. In fact, I am so stealing that 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 pick. Although it's really, really small. It's only 74K. Hopefully, I can find a bigger one. It's from Shutterstock uh, by a guy named Dee Mazel. No, that's Photoshopped to hell. There is no way that is a real shot. No way in any way, shape, or form is that a real shot. 
that's that is definitely um, a photoshopped image. I don't think you think that's a NASA image. So, but thank you for that. This one's called. Hey, here's a good question. Okay. Hi, Mark. Somehow my own questions made me stumble onto a really good question uh, or an idea for a simple experiment. So we have this equation for the curve. I wanted to test it, and the mile is too long. So I started dividing 8 inches per mile, so 4 inches per half mile, and so on. I got to a 16th of a mile, and it dawned on me. We have nanotech. That means we can measure really, really small things. There has to be a way of measuring the curve in a small body of water, right? My main concern with this division of the equation is in regards to the squared part. Does the square get divided or altered when doing this math? I want to do this experiment to find out the smallest body of water needed to measure the so-called curve. Cheers, Paul. Uh, yeah, okay, first off, any the, the original formula, and it's not ours, is 8 inches per mile squared, right? So it's 8 inches per mile per mile, or we'll take 3 miles, for example. So if you're looking at a target 3 miles away, it'd be 3 times itself. So 3 times 3 is 9 times 8 inches, which is 72. And it gets worse. You know, it, it's going to get steeper and steeper as you get further along. So 10 times 10, 10 miles, would be 100 times 8 is 800 inches. So much, much further. And then if you get up to or upwards around 50 miles, which is 50 times 50 times 8, you're looking at, you know, the better part of between 16 and 1700 feet of curvature. Uh, now, what's the smallest body of water? It's not even the, the, the nanotech that would be the problem. The problem would be what sort of camera you're using to measure the distance. What, um, wh what are you shooting with? And how it's, you'd have to use some really, really precise uh, camera work that would also have to be bubble leveled. And anyway, if anyone's got some ideas here, I, I'd like to hear it. But I don't think you can do it on like a six foot trough of water if that's what you're worried or concerned about or even a swimming pool a perfectly calm swimming pool uh, although it, that is interesting and it's something indoor what's the biggest indoor swimming pool you could test it on hmm that's an interesting thought anyway thank you for that paul this one's called 1944 flight manual picks mark my buddy that got me to initially look into moon landings and the flatters sent me this nifty find and what did he send you? He sent you a Blue Jackets manual from 1944. And inside it on page 375, sure enough, is an AE map showing the tide cycles. Huh. Really, really interesting. 12 hours. Oh, that's really, really cool. I've never seen an, uh, a tide cycle. It's from, it's from a long time ago. So thank you for that. That's from Bill. This one's called Compiling Earth data. Hi, Mark. Just watched Q&A 105. First email and would like to get in touch with Scott Price. Let proofs this one and for all. Let proof this one and for all. Thanks, Matt. And I don't know if I've got Scott's email, but I'll put that into a pile and I will see if I can I can give that to you if I get a chance. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get quicker at these, trying to hook up people with other people. I'm not going to be able to do it forever, but I will do it as long as I can. This one's called Gemini Mission Videos. Mark, I stumbled across a page on YouTube. Jeff Quitney, Q-U-I-T-N-E-Y. -E He's got some great vintage era videos. This one is a breakdown of the Gemini spacesuit. Thick felt for micrometeorite protection. Wow. Check them out. And yeah, he didn't. I don't know if I was supposed to get a link or if he just sent me the text from it. Uh, but you guys can look up all those, the old spacesuits from Gemini. Those are the really interesting ones because they just look like motorcycle suits, only silver. Very, very interesting. And why did they change so much? And why has every spacesuit always been flawless? And why has no astronaut ever in the history of astronauts ever died in a spacesuit? Gotta wonder. This one's called Flat Earth Flight Paths. Hi, Mark. Thanks for the links you sent. My boss visited last week, and as we were driving between sales calls, I mentioned about how I didn't believe in the lunar landing. He brought up about the so-called Mars landing. Eventually, I told him I wasn't convinced we are living in a globe using flight paths as a reason for concern. He said he's flown from Sydney to Santiago, Chile. Oh, is Sydney to freaking Santiago? 
uh, directly in about 12 hours. I felt like asking him to show me the ticket. Anyway, have you heard of this before? Yes, I have. Uh, and that's best regards. That's from uh, Scott. Uh, yeah, okay. First off, the, the reason I even made Clue 9 was because of the Sydney to Santiago flight. Because he said, look, in, in Clue 7, <clears throat> I couldn't find any uh, flat earth flights. Uh, the, I'm sorry, uh, non-stop, non-stop flights. 95% of the, the flights in the Southern Hemisphere are uh, multiple stops, not just one connection, but a lot of the times two connections, and they're really, really weird. And then finally, a few people fought, just found just a handful of non-stops in the Southern Hemisphere, and it's really, really frustrating to the travel agents down there. I know, I've talked to them. And... After that, I said, oh, okay, well, you know, that's when I started looking at the routes. And so it's not that the flight doesn't exist, but the routes cannot be proven in the way that you think they're going to go, meaning the GPS system, which again, watch clue number nine which is called the magic show, which is uh, the flight routes absolutely disappear. The latitude and longitude coordinates go into estimated or approximated mode, and they never come out of it until they're just within land radar range. The GPS system does not do what you think it does. But thank you, Scott, for helping me through with a review. This one's called Fun with Nigerian Email Scammers. <laughs> okay. Be, and, and the reason uh, why people uh, send these to me is because I every once in a while I'll read some of the Nigerian emails that get spammed to everybody that you know. Like your bank account information needs to be updated and any other information has to be updated. Uh, hi, Mark. Okay to read this on air, but it's kind of long and not flat earth relevant. Just finished Q&A 105. Great discussion and powerful email at the end. Anyway, the Nigerian scammers are a lot of fun and here are amusing stories of people who troll them. There is a website where lots of interesting scams and trolling are discussed and it's at scamorama.com. Uh, it's awesome. I'm going to have to check that out. Below is some fun trolling that got written up as the full book documenting, documenting the author's trolling adventures. Here's an expert excerpt from the book, which is fun for us old internet veterans who remember when these scams started back in the 90s. Yeah, they started really as soon as the internet fired up. And the people were blanketing, especially the United States, because uh, Americans are so freaking greedy. Anyway, cool. Thank you for that. And no, I'm not going to read it. It's it's pretty it's pretty damn long. <clears throat> this one's called "Watch Interview with an Ex Flat Earther on YouTube." That's from Dennis, and Dennis sent me this YouTube video. And yeah, yeah, it's there, we have dedicated trolls now. I mean, this particular troll, is, and I I'm not going to give him too much credit. It's called "Fight the Flat Earth," and it's uh, an interview with Adam Doty. And I'm not going to spell his name on, but you guys know who he is. Anybody who's been flattered for a while knows full well who he is. And you know the circumstances around it. And I'm not going to pick on him too much. Uh, but, he, but yeah, interesting that he would come back and, and join the trolls. So thank you for that. And you were not the first person to send me that either. This one's called Flatter Slides, please. Hello, Mark. Can I please have the Flatter Slides and any other reference material you can share? Keep up the good work. Thanks, Mike from Virginia. So I sent those to him. This one's called Seattle Wallingford Meetup. Greetings, Mr. Sergeant. I hope this message finds you in good spirits. My name is Thomas, but I go by Absalom to my friends and Wind zero w ninja on youtube i've been a fan of your work and a flat earther since 2015 shortly after a friend asked me to check out the clues for her and then after i think i might have left you an incoherent message at one time i, I do get those uh well well now i've had some time to take it all in and integrate the revelation relearning everything i've joined groups faced down the trolls and taken my bruises but now i want to hit a little bit harder I've been working on my boss who runs an active space where we, where we threw dances and rent, oh, throw, yeah, spell checker guys, throw dances and rent out the space for parties. At lunch the other day, he brings up the cat joke. You know, the one about cats knocking everything off the flat earth. Well, after all, I reminded him that cats like sitting in boxes and would never uh, and could never knock anything off of a flat earth that is enclosed. I kind of threw it out there that I wanted to have a meetup in that space. And if he lets me organize it, it would blow his mind. 
this is where hopefully you come in. I would like to schedule some presenters to speak and was hoping you could. Then you can hold, host 200 people pretty easy. I have no set date of yet. It really depends on what can be organized and how long it takes to do that. I have a small crew of local dedicated flat earthers that will help with organizing and production, but right now I'm still trying to figure out what's possible. Your input would be well appreciated. Keep it flat and motionless, Thomas. Uh, yeah, absolutely. If anyone wants to do any sort of local big meetup or something a little more advanced, by all means, we, we've done enough of them. I mean, there's been hundreds of regional meetups and conferences all over the place. So why not? If, if you're up for it, just let me know. And I will reach out to anybody that's local or anyone that's that wants to, to, to come up to the Northwest and speak. And uh, we should be able to get something going. So cool. Thank you. Thank you for offering, Thomas. And hopefully we can make it happen. 2019 is going to be a really cool year. I've got a, I got a good feeling about it. This one's called Behind the Curve Film. Mark, okay, so I'm watching the documentary for a second time after purchasing it. And I'm a little annoyed because they make you look like a pig. <laughs> In their cartoon animation so annoying uh that's from karen thank you karen and no look i've seen the the, the animations a bunch of you're the first person to say that and i know the way they have the animations they don't really give me much of a pronounced nose and they, they they're more on just facial features like my big eyebrows which they kind of drew like two two square caterpillars above my eyes and they just give me two nostrils which kind of makes me flat nosed kind of makes me look like a pig not that much though plus i also have a pretty round head in the animation which is fine like i'm one of only, only a handful of people that even has an animation in the in the show in the movie i think the only, only other guy is um aside from bit players is matt so check it out if you get a chance. Uh, again, behindthecurvefilm.com. Uh, it's available on all your streaming, Amazon and Google Play. And uh, I don't think, I, is it on Netflix? I don't even know if it's on Netflix. iTunes, it's on iTunes. I don't think it's on Netflix though, because there's, it's, there's some exclusive thing happening there. I don't know, I'm not the producer. But thank you for, for, for caring, Karen. And don't worry, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not offended in any way, shape or form. Hopefully nobody else is either besides you. This one's called Flat Earth is a Fact. Hi, Mark. It's been a long time that I realized the Earth is flat, so I am just saying hello to you. It is a long time that I watched you and Patricia doing your videos. I'm still 100% a flat earther and am still in the Philippines as I have no money to go back to England. Maybe the creator will listen to me and send me some money. Do you want to go back to England? Oh, <laughs> oh, this is a great ending. Yes, I used to be an atheist, but no more as I know we were all created by him. He has sent me money as my father left me a lot of money in a will, about five and a half million pounds. Uh, but the man who has the money wants 11,000 pounds as my father lent it from him before he died. So where can I find that money? Best Joe. Bet Joe, I don't know if you're pulling my leg or not on this because as you know, I get a lot of emails from Nigeria. But thanks for that. This one's called Meetings in England. Hey, Mark, it's Adam from Planet Mars. Is there any meetups in the Birmingham area of the UK? Many thanks. Keep it flat, Adam. I would direct you to my Flat Earth Meetups playlist, which is on YouTube. You can, you can check that out. I try to promote as many of the Flat Earth Meetups as I can, not, not only in the United States, but in England and in other places. So check check those out if you get a chance. I don't know if there's anything coming up in Birmingham. Uh, one of the best pe people to call to find out. I mean, there's so many people in England that you could call to find out what, what's happening. But a great coordinator over there. Um, the best person there would be Roxanne Glenn. And you can check her out. Her channel is literally called uh, Roxanne Glenn, the Globe Denier. And if you need her contact information or you can't find it, let me know. And I will put you in touch with her. So thank you for that. This one's called New Flat Earth Short Vid. Hey, Mark Sean Rose from Greenwood, Indiana here again. I posted another Flat Earth Short Video. Please check it out when you can. Also, and you have to say the following line like Lumberg from Office Space. Okay, ready? Yeah, so if you can go ahead and mirror it on your page, that'd be great. Okay, thanks. There you go, it's my best Lumberg. Keep it flat, the vid title is uh, come on, a flat earth short or Simon, a flat earth short C I M O N. 
you know what? I'm going to click on it just to see what he did here. And it's called C-I-M-O-N, a flatter short. All right. Thank you for that. I will check it out. And the rest of his email says, P.S. I have a t-shirt shop on eBay with many flat earth designs and more. If you can mention it, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks. Just type, type in thirsty shop on Etsy. So it's T-H-I-R-S and then space T shop on, on Etsy. So it's very clever. Thirsty shop. It's good. All right, this one's called Respect Earned for Sure. Mark, I wanted to quickly say that you earned my respect and you showed who you really are. Keep up all the great things you're doing. And I suspect that in order to achieve greater influence and to create anonymity for those who would uh, otherwise remain silent in matters as it pertains to the earth and its shape, that not only should we have the annual uh, Flat Earth Conference, but we should in fact hold free events, at least admission, uh, with more of a likeness to regional festivals and uh, no meetup, and meetups do not count. I'm talking presentations, music, community on a far larger scale, a Woodstock type event. It's a shame we don't have the drive and will as those in the 1960s as it pertains to protest activism and letting our voices be heard. I really scratch my head when I think there has not been one large scale protest in almost four years. I observe enough awakened that in fact we did organize an event. It would prove far larger with greater impact and with unmatched resolve than any other activism of the past. You realize that eventually the awakening will result in uprising it's not a matter of if, but when. Below are just a few pertinent lyrics that I, continue, that I consider my favorites. The hungry won't stay hungry for long. You can't silence the voice of the voiceless. When you turn the power to the have-nots, they take a shot. Why not on a silent platform? Fight the war. Screw the norm. Rage, oh, rage, rage Against the Machine. Thanks and God bless, Jim. Cool, Jim. Thank you. This one's called Horizontal Refraction, a Physicist Flat Earth Theory. Mark, thanks for all your work and videos. For the past 12 months, I've worked on and off with physicists who hold master's degrees to accurately calculate atmospheric refraction. Now that we've completed the work, we've discovered that mainstream flat earth theorists, as well as NASA, have generally ignored visual distortion caused by the atmosphere for the viewer who is outside the atmosphere and looking back down to Earth. We have proven that the horizon of Earth will suffer from curvature distortion, which is caused by the atmosphere. Our work is backed up by research documents, mathematical formula, and computer simulation. Although the video is 35 minutes, it represents 12 months of research. I have found nobody to date who has explained this phenomenon accurately. This should be the first time the concept has ever been demonstrated. Attached is only one page of the math calculations to show this is a completely serious subject with educated individuals. If you find the content relevant, please share or repost the video. Thanks, and that's from Ryan. And the video is called A Physicist Flatter Theory Horizontal Refraction. Huh, I, and he posted it December 1st. So it's not very old, and you guys can check that out. And he screwed up a little bit, which was, okay, I'm going to type this in. It's like, make flat earth all with no extra spaces because it will not show up in search engines. Thanks. Okay, so what he did, and again, it's not, I'm not lecturing, but if you're going to do something clever, like put Flat Earth in the title of your video, don't put spaces. Now, putting it all caps, that's one thing, but he put spaces in between each letter, and as you know, search engines are picky, and so it didn't read it as Flat Earth. I didn't even see this video. Did not even see it. So, but, but I just put that in his comments, so hopefully he, he notices, and hopefully somebody, you know, maybe he heard this on... Uh, Q&A 106. Okay, this one's called, I think you forgot. Mark, I know you're a busy guy. I think you forgot to email me the 12 slides. Thanks again, Frank. And no, in some case, you know, it's rare, but what happened with Frank was, and if, if that ever happens with you, let me know. I'm, I'm usually really good about attaching stuff, but sometimes an email system will not allow 
uh, attached files of any given size or you've got some sort of spam filter set up because uh, like mine, for example, I can accept files up to or send or receive up to like 25 megs through email. But it, it, every once in a while I'll run to somebody, you know, I literally just hit reply and I try to send them anything, not even attached files, uh, just, just a straight up email. And it says, nope, sorry, uh, your, um, you know, invalid address or something to the, you know, permanent error. It's like, what? So I just, I go, do you got anything else? And so he sent me a secondary email address and I just shot it off through there. It's rare, but it does happen. Computers, right? 2018. And we are still having fun little problems like that. This one's called Humana Story. Mark, I am curious. How come you never do shows with them anymore? Could you have them on your show time sometime? Keep it flat from Phil McKenzie. And yeah, I, no, no, I talk to Brian, eh, not, not real often, but pretty often. He's he's in my guild for in Warcraft. It's the, the guild name is called Flat Earth, and he's in it with his wife. Uh, we play every once in a while, but yeah, we haven't done a, a show in, he's, he's busy doing a lot of different things. He's got his fingers in a lot of different pies. And so if, when he gets around to it, great. You know me, I, I'd love to do stuff with Humana Story. They're fun people. This one's called No Subject. Hey, Uncle Mark, it's me, Paul Newhouse. I just heard your Strange World episode 174 and heard you saying that there's going to be something happening at the Thunder Bay Public Library. I live in Thunder Bay and literally live like one block away from the library. So please clear this up for me so I can be there and show my support. Anyway, thanks. And you're always welcome uh, to mention my emails on your email shows. Cheers, Uncle Mark. And what he's talking about, let me type it in here real quick. Behind the curve film.com. And if you go to screenings, the, the last screening of the year so far that we have scheduled, I don't think there's going to be anything else. I think it's going to be the last one because now it's, it's out in general release. You can just, you don't have to go to a, a film festival to see it. You can actually just watch it at home now or on your, wherever you are. Uh, the last showing of the year is currently Wednesday, December 12th. Uh, it's next week at the Thunder Bay Public Library. It's the in Thunder Bay, Ontario. It is the Hot Docs Showcase uh, for. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. It's the it's the redo. That's right. Uh, so for films, out of all the the films that were at the Hot Docs, how how great is that? I didn't didn't even occur to me until just now. So the film premiered at the Hot Docs. Uh, film festival in Toronto, Canada, and I was up there with Patricia Steer and the director and the producers. And out of all the films that were up there, they they do like a, a in this case a hot doc showcase, and that is the films that they liked, even you know they that they wanted to show again. They they're showing at the Thunder Bay Public Library, so that's awesome. Very, very cool. What a, what a fun way to close out the whole film festival thing. And really, considering it was the first Flat Earth uh, documentary ever made, it has done surprisingly well in the film festival circuit. 21 film festivals in seven countries, which is fantastic. In fact, there's still, uh, it just was just showed in San Francisco, and it was just in Moscow, and it's going to be in Guelph, Ontario on the 9th, and then, of course, the last one's going to be December 12th, and then we get into the whole holiday season. So thank you for that. This one's called Flat Earth New Zealand. Mark Sargent pre-conference meet and greet. Hi, Mark. How are you? It's Richard from New Zealand. You did a live stream for us back this May this year at our first conference. That's right. You remember. Well, Mark, we're having another conference April the 27th, 2019 in Auckland, New Zealand again, and would love to live stream you again if you don't mind. We'll wait to hear back from you. Warm regards, Richard Morgan. Yeah. Anybody that wants me to, you know, whether it's a conference or a meetup or whatever, um, if it's out of state or out of country, I, I don't necessarily have to fly in. I, I will if, if you pay for the ticket. But if, uh, if you want me to just come in via Skype or however you want me to come in, that's what we did last year with these guys in New Zealand. They just piped me in, put me on a big screen, and um, I think it was a tavern. Uh, of course, why why wouldn't New Zealand have a flat Earth conference, little mini conference in in a tavern? But I came in and, and spoke, and I think Dave Murphy did from the UK as well, and it was a lot of fun. And I just did Q and A's, kind of like what I'm going to be doing with uh, some middle school here in a couple hours. At least I think that's what's going to happen. All right, this one's called <clears throat> acronyms, uh, and this was from the people. Okay. <clears throat> 
So uh, you guys probably remember the I, I'm a big fan of acronyms and people. In fact, I call them TLAs. And you can look that up later. And so Chip sent in a couple. He sent for flat. He it, he turned it into find level aqua table. And then Earth is exhaust all research then hypothesize. That's from Chip. That's awesome. And then he sent me another one, which is, it's flat earth again. Here we go. Flat is fixing listless attitudes toward, and then earth is each actual reality that happens. Chip is so creative. He also, of course, does so many musical things for me that it's, it's really fun. I love all his music stuff. This one's called a possible answer. Hi, Mark. I hope you are well. My name is Warren. I've been following the flatter theory for a while now. I am also convinced that Earth is flat, but it bothered me that there is no explanation as to how it looks. I'm sure you know what I mean. Until I came across the Sumerian text explaining how our solar system was formed and how Tiamat, later Kai or Ki, Earth, was impacted by one of Nibiru's moons and split in two. The one half forming the asteroid belt and the other half left dangling in space. To me, it makes some sense that this would account for the Earth's flat Earth surface with the remaining half sphere of the planet underneath. The Sumerian text also speaks about how the Anunnaki tried to erect a dome around their own planet in an effort to protect their dwindling atmosphere, but failed. Perhaps it was too large of a task. Thus, they had to come here, mine the gold, and perhaps in a bid to protect their own kin and their gold supply from enduring any further cataclysms. Uh, like the Great Flood, when Nibiru's passing caused the ice caps to dislodge, causing the ensuing carnage. They erected a dome over the existing half-planet. The Gnostics spoke about how the Demiurge had created a poor copy of the universe in, in the Nag Hammadi texts, so it might be possible that the universe was recreated and projected onto this constructed dome, and this is what we see today. We have no access to the real solar system of the greater universe due to this confinement, but are in fact seeing an image of what lies beyond. This could be a lot of hogwash, but maybe it sparks some debate, and one day we can find out the truth. Please keep up the great work. Kind regards, Warren. Um, okay, my take on that, Warren, is this. I was a big Nibiru fan and was waiting for it all the way back in 2011 and never happened. Nothing ever materialized. And then 2012 happened and nothing happened and 2013 and 2014. Look, we're, we're just coming up on 2019 now. What happened to the whole Nibiru thing? Nothing. And that's because it doesn't exist. It was a great story, fantastic story that I think was it was one of the more clever things that was put out by NASA a long time ago with the IRAS satellite that they picked up something all and you know the and the big gap in the uh, the Google space map that they wouldn't show us and, and it was a great story it was a great diversion but if Nibiru if, if Nibiru did uh, um, all of a sudden appear in the sky just now my first question after I'd stare at it you know for a while I wouldn't be scared at all I'd be like okay so why now where, where have you been why was everybody so off? No, no, Nibiru, not going to happen. If you see anything that's happening in the sky, it is all part of the elaborate light show and could be artificial in this case. This one's called a couple of quick questions regarding the University of Victoria video. Hi, Mark. In the discussion with the group that the university at the university, the subject of the tides being influenced by the moon came up. From what I understand now, the moon's position in the sky doesn't always coincide with the high tides and sometimes is the opposite. Just wondering why you didn't raise this point with those guys first before presenting the possibility of uh, the tides being controlled by other forces. Because uh, they didn't know uh, that the moon's position in the sky doesn't always coincide with high tides and sometimes um, it's the opposite. Seriously, somebody sent me a couple articles on that. Uh, two, in the discussion, the idea was put forth the Earth's atmosphere was warmed in part by the Earth itself, some from the sun, and also we have we are in an enclosed dome keeping heat in. Is that the case? What explains the huge polar regions that we have? How can we have enough extreme in climate for this to occur? Thanks for your great work in, in getting the world to think about this subject, and that's Neil from Australia. I uh, what, what, what can I tell you here, Neil? I'm trying to think of something that's really easy for people to understand, and that is if you have a structure that's large large enough, you it's very very easy to do dual climate. 
things. Uh, I mean, come on, we, we have dual climate stuff in cars now we've had for some years, which I still think is ridiculous considering a car is tiny by comparison. But you can do multiple climates all over the place. If you're going to say, oh, why do we have Arctic regions? Why well, just say, why do we have deserts versus uh, forested regions on the planet? It's, it's, it's just an extreme version of that. Why, why isn't the entire place just one even climate? Why isn't it all like Southern California? Um, and that is because it's just, it's so huge that you can get away with doing heating and cooling with all sorts of different methods and do it pretty successfully. There you go. That's my answer. This one's called, hello, Mark, is there anyone who is using this email address? That's from Emra. And I wrote him back. I said, yeah, it's me. And he writes back again and says, thank you so very much. I am listening to your YouTube channel. I would like to help in any way I can do. And so I just sent him a link to the Flatter shortlist for new people and the testimony shows and the documentary. And he's got a lot of homework. If he's just getting into it now. I, I mean, I, people have a lot of questions. They always do. And so I just kind of let people go down the path for a while, which is like, it's going to take you a few weeks usually. And when you come out to the end of the tunnel, your questions that you have now are probably going to be different. This one's called hello again. Different guy though. Hi, Mark. I'm listening with great interest to your Q&A emails on YouTube. Something is puzzling me, though. I was looking at the moon this morning, and it was a crescent. I was wondering, what do you think causes this? Uh, it's no different than a crescent in a planetarium. Uh, I know you must have given your thoughts on this many times, but sometimes I have the memory of a goldfish. <laughs> it's funny. I know as flat earthers, we believe the moon and sun are the same size and roughly the same distance away from us, and that that's what causes a total eclipse. But what about the phases of the moon? Yeah, again, planetarium. I was hoping you you would explain what you think. Do you believe the moon is a transparent disk or an actual sphere? Either. It could be either, in my opinion, and I'm not going to lose any sleep on it. One thing that really bugs me is when people argue that because the planets are round, when the Earth must be round, have they never seen a pool table? Have they never been... A, you just answer your own question. Have they never been to a planetarium? I also wanted to know your thoughts on the death of George Bush Sr. Uh, he was old. He was ninety. He was in his nineties. What, what do you want? My my grandfather made it to a hundred, and he was touch and go through a big chunk of his nineties. So I don't think. So I, I'm sorry. I got to finish this email. Most of us who have been down the YouTube rabbit hole for some time know all about the supposed antics of that man. Do I think he faked his death at ninety four? No. No, I don't. From the David Icke school, which teaches us that he was a shape-shifting reptilian, which of course is ridiculous from the school of thought that he was one of the main conspirators behind JFK's assassination. Uh, oh, George Bush Sr.? No, not one of the main conspirators. He, he could have had an instrumental part, I suppose. Uh, but there was a lot. I mean, that was a pretty big op. I mean, there was a lot of people you had to have involved in that. Uh, every, but I mean, most of it was internal government. I mean, it wasn't civilians, obviously. It was all Secret Service and... Uh, um, black site agencies type of thing and but bam that's a whole nother topic for another time uh do you believe bush was a member of the rothschild and rockefeller elitists who are planning a totalitarian to total oh geez forget about that word for now i can't speak this morning uh one world government uh sure yes uh, what do you think of the famous footage of his trip to nasa headquarters where we saw tim peak performing tricks in front of a blue screen uh, a plausible explanation for of something deeper. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, the reason I, I knew when I saw that footage how it got out there. I don't think that footage was supposed to get out. It got out, though, because people, his handlers, take precedent over the NASA handlers. So he's walking through with his wheelchair, and there are people filming him, right? Well, he's an ex-president, so there's there's publicists that have to, to look at his footage. And they were just looking at him. They were not looking at the screen behind him. They didn't care about the screens behind him. And so NASA didn't even have a chance to to review those. It went straight to his camp. And that's why I got released. And we like we noticed it. It's like, again, that's what I would have done too. It's like, oh, does he, you know, does does the president look good? Okay, he's not drooling on anything. No, no, his wheelchair looks good. Everybody's, you know, no awkward moments. Great, fantastic. You're staring just at him. It's a misdirection kind of screwed him up in this this case. Uh, the email finishes with this. I also want to know your thoughts on the latest Mars rover news. I think it's utter rubbish. 
I think it's funny how all the explanations for how this supposed craft is able to land on Mars are accompanied by CGI images. Anyway, thanks for your time and keep fighting the good fight. Regards, Colin from UK. Uh, let me end this for Colin. Uh, yeah, the, the Mars rover. Again, it's just another space beat. That's all it is. Why? Okay, okay, first off, why, if the other rover is working just fine, why did we send a, another one? And also, wouldn't it behoove them to get the two rovers next to each other? If they got a chance, you know, like shooting each other's pictures? And uh, it's, it's just awful. It's just terrible. There's so many things wrong with all. Keep, keep hyping up the Mars stuff, seriously. No one's ever, ever, ever going there. Even if it was real, you're not going there. It's a one way trip. Remember, even if it's, even off all the mainstream science is real, even if you could land on Mars, it's a one way trip. There is no way to get the fuel. Here's why there's no fuel. Once you get there, that's it. There's no gas to come back and there's no gas stations there. And you'd have to literally build your entire, you'd have to build a rocket manufacturing plant. You would have to build an entire new NASA facility there, then launch a rocket back. And again, and of course the other question is why would you even bother launching a rocket back at that point? What? Cause people are going to commute to Mars. No, 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 no. Terrible. Awful idea. This one's called Set Moon Phases to Stun. Oh, that's a good title. Hi, Mark. This is Gene from New York. You're a living legend, bro. Thank you. Like many others, I set out to prove the ball and I flattened out about two hours into my debunk. Wow, you're faster than most. Shocked and relief, actually. I have a question about the moon that I've had no luck finding anyone talking about. Maybe you know this one. The moon has different phases, right? They seem to be dedicated to a specific shape and size. My question is about the transition between these phases. Is there any? Does a quarter moon stay a quarter moon all night? Where the three eighths or seven sixteenths moon or 13 30 seconds? Wouldn't a three hour time lapse show some change? Hmm, good, good point. Is there... If there's no slow change, then wash, rinse, repeat, I guess. So what kind of cool stuff are you looking for? I have cool stuff. My house was built in 1845 by Freemasons. I have a cast iron symbol I found in my yard, as well as a floorboard with a crude stamp on it. I have a skull and bones button from who knows when. My Wall Street bricks are awesome. Would you like some pictures? I, ha I could cast copies for the movement if you think it might help somehow. Be well, stay in touch. Gene. And yeah, yeah, so me picks, whatever. I mean, it's really interesting. If your house was built in 1845 by Freemasons, I would love to know what it looks like. It's one of the older homes I've heard about. This one's called Survival Guide, 12 Picks, another Flat Earth Info. Hey, Mark, thanks for your time and uh, two cents. I've been listening to your vids recently. I've really enjoyed what you've been uh, putting out. Peace on your paths, Scott. Thank you, Scott. <clears throat> this one's called question lisa from orlando hey mark hope all is well with you i was really disappointed i couldn't make the denver conference i plan to be there next year my question before i start to research it is i was driving home noticed the rainbow arcing in the sky and thought wow it's the first time i've looked at a rainbow and thought about the firmament what were your thoughts on how the rainbow works if there is a firmament is it somehow taking the shape of the firmament I know the rainbow is much lower. Have a great day, LK, otherwise known as Lisa in Orlando. And yeah, when it comes to the, the rainbows, uh, the, the bigger thing is how a rainbow, rainbow gets formed at all. Because we can, we can make rainbows inside, but you need water, a light source, and a reflective surface. Again, easy to do inside. But outside, yeah, of course, you got light and you got water. Where's the reflective surface exactly? I'm not talking about the reflective surface of the water itself. I'm talking about the other external uh, reflective surface. Is it the dome itself? Also interesting, if you want to look up some fun stuff on YouTube, type in rainbow from helicopter because a rainbow, yeah, it has that dome-like shape uh, when you're looking at it from the ground. But if you get above it in a helicopter, it's even cooler. When you're up above it in a, in a helicopter, it actually looks like a dome. It's, it's this big circle on the ground. It's not just this, this half circle. It's a, it's a full-blown circle hovering above the ground. Uh, it's very, very fascinating. This one's called Possible Meetup in Palm Beach, Florida. Hey, Mark, it's Phil. I would ask you to give my email and number out on your show that anyone near Palm Beach, Florida come together for a meetup. 
I don't have anything set up, but the Flat Earth Vegans live around here as well as some others. My email is P-H-I-Z-Z-L-E-M at gmail.com. That's fizzle, fizzle at gmail.com. My phone number is 419-297-7348. Thank you, good sir. Keep it flat because globalists suck. Very welcome for that. This one's called NASA Conspiracy. ISS faked and it is filmed on Earth. Can't claims alien hunter from the Daily Star. And let me look up. This is probably my last one. Continue and accept all privacy policy. And it's from the Daily Star out in the UK. Alien hunter claims ISS is fake and it's actually filmed on Earth in bombshell video. And it's a pretty big article. And you guys can check that out if you get a chance. And I don't wonder where he got those ideas. Probably from us. But again, he's he can say NASA, you know, ISS is fake, but he's not going to say flat Earth. And you know what? Let's end on one more. Uh, this one's called "Watch Chris Hatfield Gets Tough on Space Station Spills" on YouTube. Uh, this one's going to make me wince, I'm sure. And it's called "Chris Hatfield Gets Tough on Space Station F- Spills." Oh heck, it was that was from 2013, man. But it is an interesting video. Uh, Chris Hatfield gives us a demonstration on how astronauts clean up spills in the astronaut on the on the space station. Yeah. All right. You know what? We'll call that one good. So thanks for everybody that sent in emails so far, and everybody's going to send emails in the future. Remember, you can shoot them to me at msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M S A R G E N T twenty three at comcast.net. And until next time, guys, stay flat. Oh, wait, bonus, bonus voicemail. Then stay flat. Hey, boy, you just earned yourself a new subscriber. You're pretty epic, and I just wanted to let you know. Thanks.